Watson Cottage by KLG Architects. Watson Cottage is cause for the idiom, small is beautiful. The simplicity of materials and skillful detailing contribute to sparse interiors that through strategic apertures and bay window seats, connect the inside to the staggering views of Betty's Bay beyond. The cutaway porch, the projecting bay windows and the sensitive low flush aligned roof contribute to an architecture of humble restraint in service to the dramatic backdrop. House Ferreira by Pinard Architecture. Beauty and the value of this windswept seaside holiday house lies in its hiddenness amongst mushrooming neighbors. Where neighbors push forward and hire to announce their presence and their occupation of the magnificent bay, House Ferreira pulls itself backward and downward into the Milkwood Forest without sacrificing its connection to the ocean in the east and the Milkwood Thicket to the west. The building exemplifies humility, contextual engagement, rejection of stylistic surrender, and bold and outgoing yet well-mannered architecture. De Groenhees by Slee and Company Architects. De Groenhees is nestled among Celtis trees and is enclosed in a steel cage with an ever-advancing facade of star jasmine. The building faces the Pretoria Country Club golf course across the road and shares the club's river. The river demanded respect and presented challenges. Gabions were extensively used as retaining walls for the river and the walls encasing the building. The plain face brick and corrugated iron building materials and finishes are typical of Pretoria. From within, abundant windows draw the eye to lush indigenous landscaping. Linksfield Shul and Community Center by Hugh Bow Studio. The Linksfield Shul and Community Center is a special project as it engages with an existing synagogue and community space. This whole project began with the envisioning of youth at the forefront. It was transformed into a state-of-the-art, unique and next-level center of Jewish life. The Shul and Community Center was envisioned holistically and completed in two phases. The old was broken down and a new light, new axes and new line could emerge. A bridge from east to west joined the two ladies' sections in the shul, making it feel more contained. Each element was designed, fabricated and created to fit this unique light, airy and homey shul. The synagogue opens directly onto the new community centre, which consists of an auditorium that fits over 250 people. Barlow World Equipment Showroom by Paragon Architects The Barlow World Equipment Showroom is an interdisciplinary feat combining the technical expertise of architects and specialists and notably the client's insightful conceptual contribution of equipment. An earth-moving truck forms the heart of the concept. The building is a stunning rendition of contemporary architecture that simultaneously retains the old has striking form and is a marked upgrade of showroom typology. Rooftop Productions Alterations by Struct Architects. The building used to be a church, quiet and unassuming. Structurally, the building was of good quality and provided the required floor area. The functional entryway is the original main entrance, which opens onto an internal double volume street space. In turn, the entry guides the visitor into a generous double-story space with clear glass-fronted workspaces. The glass encourages a sense of community by removing barriers between the workers and the visitors. Respect for what has been and for what has now been contained in this new iteration of the building is evident throughout all the spaces and all the detailing. Christchurch Somerset West by Nowero Architects a circle embedded in a square was developed as the plan form of Christchurch Somerset West. The circular space has a dramatic vertical dimension, bringing the priest to within 15 meters of anyone in the church. Natural light is brought down into the circular volume from the roof and a cross is formed by the play of the solid and void elements of the roof light. The interior finishes are minimal, echoing the ethos of the church. This new church was built alongside the existing church to house a burgeoning congregation. Upper Whelan House by Douglas and Company Architects. 
The masonry facade of Upper Whelan House, with its vertically proportioned and symmetrical openings under hip roof, not to its streetscape context. The interior spaces pivot the user towards frame views of the mountain and the surrounding historic townscape. The scullery, bathrooms, bedrooms and study spaces flow from a tight but comfortably designed three-story central staircase. The structure is fully glazed to the south and bay windows invite to the east. The structure's other half is functional, crafted and scaled timber with an imposing steel frame. The Bank by Defoncio Architects. The building strikingly balances grandeur and charm. Substantial vertical and horizontal gestures are mediated by the human scaled brick, brass, and planted elements. While refreshing its context with a new cafe, restaurant, retail, and co working spaces, it also hits the elusive note of seeming to have always been there. The timeless lower level adherence to form, proportion and rational order is topped with the upper level office spaces which are relatively wild, contemporary and experimental. This building can be appreciated for its technical elegance and seamless assimilation into the context while offering energizing programs back to its users. Neil Agate Inquest by Savage and Dodd Architects The Neil Agate Inquest document is forensic architectural evidence. The document was compiled to address the renewed inquest into the death of Neil Agate. The architects recreated the spatial quality, sequencing and logical unfolding of events in the spatial framework, contributing to recording a new narrative concerning the unfinished business of the pursuit of restorative justice in South Africa. The role of architects and the built environment has not yet been interrogated.